Hey guys, welcome back to the multi-tenant RLS auth video series. In the last video, we took a look at how to build the form UI for the sign-in and sign-on workflow and I showed you how to hash password and also how to create sessions. Now in today's video, we'll be focusing on the database side of things. Specifically, I'll be showing you how to set up RLS on the database. Then I'll show you how to create an access policy using the RLS that we have enabled. And lastly, I'll show you how to create an app user to which the RLS policy will be implemented on. So that is a brief overview of what we'll be taking a look at in today's video. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. All right, so to get started, the first thing we're going to do from the last bit of our application is create a new page because everything we're going to be doing in today's video is talking directly to the database. And uh, we can do that directly from AppSmith. But if you have a cool, fancy database tool like I have, I have this app called Postico, you can actually also use this to write SQL commands to talk to the database. So what I'm going to do is create a new page and then I'm going to create a query um, through which we are going to be interacting with the database. So I'm going to go to the my PG data source. I'm going to create a new query and I'm just going to select any template. It doesn't matter because we'll be writing everything we need from scratch. So in the last video, we saw that the database had two tables. So if I take a look at the PG data source, you can see that we have a table called to do's and we also have a table called users. We want RLS to be enabled for the to-dos um, table. That is because this is where all of our user data sits. So for example, if I do a quick select, star from to-dos, if we take a look at this data, you can see that we have not only user from confidence, we also have data from VHA, for example, and everything is all together in this one table. So this is where you want RLS to be enabled. So the first thing we need to do is run a command to enable RLS and it's simply just one command. So I'm going to paste this in and we'll take a look at it. So this is the command to enable RLS. By the way, all of the commands you'll be seeing in today's video will be linked below in case you need to copy paste them or make your own research. So this is the command to enable RLS. It's simply alter table, the name of the table, which is the to-do table where we want RLS to be enabled. And we just have to say enable role level security. And once we go execute this, we will have role level security enabled. It's that simple. But one small problem is that role level security is not applied to the table table owner and in fact uh, by default row level security actually logs down access to that table so in this case we are connected to postgres using the table owner which is the default postgres user row level security is not going to be applied to this user another thing to also have in mind is that we also need to open up this table because by default for users to which row level security is applied to it locks down the entire table by default. So let's move on to the next step where I show you how to create an access policy so that we can specify how we want this table to be accessed or what rules we want applied whenever this table is being accessed. Creating access policies can be as easy or as complicated as you want them to be. Uh, but for today's video, we're going to keep it really simple. And what we'll be doing is specifying a rule through which we want people to be able to access this database. So I'm just going to paste in the command for the access policy. And this is a very simple rule. So let's take a look at it. So we're going to use the create policy uh, command. And here we pass in the name of the policy we want to create. For example, we're calling this enable all actions for users based on ID. And we need to specify what table we want this policy to be created on. It's going to be the to-do's table. And then we want to tell it what rule we want applied whenever someone tries to access that table, which is the to-do's table. So here we're saying that for the user, whoever wants to access the to-do's table, uh, for them to be able to successfully access the to-do's table, we need to do a check. Postgres needs to do a check to make sure that the user session, which is going to be saved in a variable called app.appuser or app.app app underscore user, has to be the same with the user 
saved in that particular record in a to-do table. So this is kind of like a filter. Before a query is sent to Postgres, what this rule means is that we need to set the user's session and save it in a key called app dot app underscore user and then Postgres will use that value saved in the connection session to check if that is the same as the record in the to-dos table to match if that is the same as the email of that record in the to-dos table. So with this policy, we'll be able to enable access to the table only filtering by users who have access to specific records. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead to run this. And this looks good. So we've created a policy. And what this means is that if we go back to the select query you saw earlier, so I'm just going to go back to the select query. Um, only users who own specific records will be able to access them. So for example, uh, Confidence, for example, will only be able to access to those created or owned by Confidence. And Viha is only going to be able to read or access to those owned by Viha. That's the meaning of the policy uh, you just saw. So remember I mentioned earlier that um, role level security by default is not applied to the table owner. So let's fix that. Let's create an app user and that user will be used by our AppSmith application to connect to Postgres. All right, so let's start with creating a user to which the RLS we have enabled and the policies we've just defined will be applied to. So don't forget that by default, the table owner, which in this case is Postgres, the owner of the entire database, uh, doesn't have RLS enabled or applied to it because it's the table owner. You need to be able to perform CRUD operations and manage all of the tables. Uh, but since we have RLS enabled, we need a user to which we want those security policies applied to. And for that, we just need to create a user. So that's actually really easy to do. What we're going to do is create an app user called AppSmith and then have AppSmith, our app, connected to Postgres using the AppSmith app user. Uh, don't worry, everything will make sense in a second. So to create our user, we are going to use the create user command, and then the name of the user is AppSmith, and then we're going to give that user a password of AppSmith as well. So I'm going to go ahead to run this, that looks good. Then we want to grant that user access to all tables in the public schema. So that means that the user is going to have access to the to-dos table as well as the users table. But the only difference here is that for the to-dos table, we're going to have role level security policies applied for this user because we already have it enabled for the to-dos table. All right, so let's go ahead to give that user access to all tables in the public schema. And we also want to give the user access to all sequences in the public schema. So I'm going to paste this in and run this and we are good to go. So now something you notice is that since I'm still connected as the uh, Postgres user, which is the table owner, I can actually read all records from the to-dos table. So if I go to do a select, star from to-dos, uh, let's go ahead to run this one more time. Now you notice that I still have access to read all records irrespective of who created those records on the to-dos table. But let's switch things up a bit. I'm going to go to the PG data source. I'm going to go ahead to edit it. So for the authentication, I'm going to type in AppSmith, which is the new app user we just created. So let's set this to AppSmith. And then I'm also going to enter in the password and we can test this. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead to save it. And now when we head back to run this query, you notice that it wouldn't work. So I'm going to run this and you can see that we have an error. That is because we have row level security kicking in for the AppSmith user. And here it's actually telling us what we need to do, that we need to set the app dot app underscore user session so that Postgres knows what user is trying to log in and then Postgres only gives access to the records created by that user. Um, so we can actually test this out. So let's comment this away. And what I'm going to do is use a set command. So this is going to be set app dot app underscore user to and I'm going to set it to my email, so confidence.appsmith.com. 
All right. So now we're running the set command to let Postgres know what user is logged in. So we're setting the user session on the connection. All right. That looks good. And then if I go on to run the select query, so let's run the select query. You'll notice that um, I only have records coming back that are owned by Confidence. So you can see we only have records coming back owned by Confidence at AppSmith. We don't have records owned by other users showing up. So this is the power of row level security and we've been able to set it up for Postgres on the to do's table. Awesome. So we've taken a look at how to set up row level security on the database side of things. Now, in the next video, I'll show you how to use row level security we just configured on the database and the login flow you saw earlier from the second video to build a multi-tenant app on AppSmith. So go check out the next video right here uh, to carry on. Or if you missed the first video, you can also catch it from right here. All right. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.